Cool, folks. Welcome to the first ever uh, deck delve. Pretty much this is going to be an episode that focuses on a particular deck, how it's built, the concept behind it. We're going to go ahead and test it out on some one-on-ones so he can, uh, that the, the creators can walk me through it and, and how they're playing it. And then we'll go ahead and uh, watch, watch its performance on the ladder and see how well it does. So uh, this first episode, I will go ahead and turn it over to our special guest. Take it away, sir. Yes, uh, my name is Omario. Um, some other people call me Omi in the chat, in the Discord chat. Um, right now, I'm gonna present the what I what I call Triforce Slapper, which is actually different version of another deck that I have. But um, with this deck, it starts with 78 cards. That's the type of person I am. I usually go over five or three cards, the limit. And if it works, it works. Um, not really a person to be like strictly 75 cards. <laughs> a lot of people in the Discord know me for that. And, uh, you know, let's uh, go ahead and uh, try it out. Alrighty, sounds good. And why this over like the traditional, because you typically see burn, it's, I mean, there's actually a phrase, burn assassin. Uh, what is what is it about the Dagoth colors, or what is it that the strength offers that uh, shakes it up, or did you just want to do a Dagoth version of it? Well, um, mostly I just wanted cards that literally like hit face and are still on board. Mm -hmm. So, like things like Afflicted Allet, um, Blood Sorcerer is a little bit of a late one. Mm -hmm. I actually hold this one till turn six, so we'll do that. Okay, and uh. For the most part, it's just cards that hit face directly, and I just thought maybe if you had the Thieves' Den, you could have them pilfer, and, and that's just a little little different of a play style people are not used to, you know? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, I forgot to mention, so you, you saw it was a tri four Slapper, but it is uh, when uh, you first told me about it, you said it was essentially a, a um, burn pilfer, which I thought was really... Uh, um, really unique. Yeah. And for some reason, I, I was thinking it was like, well, so is it going to be monk or something? I'm thinking pilfer. I'm thinking the kitties. But it's essentially the thieves' den is the element that is the, is the pilfer yes. element to this. Correct. Okay. So when it goes off, it, it can go off pretty pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. But um, it's uh, mo most of the time I'm just bidding face before I draw the thieves' den. But you know, when I draw the thieves' den, you can see some pretty crazy stuff. Yeah. Yeah, looking forward to that. Yeah, I remember. Uh, so it's uh, and and I like the fact that you're building a board because I actually had a commenter uh, because I actually you know watched a I think it was just it was a pure burn assassin where it was like there was I mean you had Canlorn Canlorn hero but aside from that it was all hit face and he and I said it it comes off as you know a bit lazy and he's like why is it lazy I said well because you're not you're not even contesting a board you're not building a board it's just going directly to face you're not actually there's really no engagement but i like the fact that you are i mean there is direct hit to face but like with blood sorceress and uh some other cards you are actually like you are competing for the board you're not just hoping your opponent doesn't have drain at some point um there's actually right, an interaction right. going on as well as hitting right. face <laughs> of course i move as a shadow yeah, that's something that um, with this deck, even though it's burn, you want to play kind of like a mid grow mm. type deal because sometimes you can find yourself. Well, I find myself over overdoing it, and I thought if I slow down a little bit, since it's like a a tri triple attribute deck, then it would just make sense, you know? Right, right. Now, if you if you were playing against uh, like a hyper aggressive opponent, uh, tokens or orcs or something, see, right? Um, I'm sorry oh. uh, to cut you off. Sure. Um, as you can see, like I literally have this is basically four damage right here and six damage, so we we can hold on to that to finish him off. Oh yeah. But yeah, go ahead. Oh, uh, uh, so um. Uh, if you were up against like a heavy, heavy aggro list, would you be inclined to play Blood Sorceress on, like if you had her in your hand this early on, would you be tempted to play her there? Or would you still hold on at the end just and just count on the fact that you're going to be able to outpace a, an aggro opponent? Um, I, I'm the type of person who, if, if I got a, you know, 
call the shot and just get rid of it early, I will. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not... I'm not solely relying on Blood Sorceress for the win. Sure. There's there's different, like, unique cards in this deck that are actually pretty useful. Um, and right now, we're just gonna do that, and we can go ahead and uh, finish it. Nah. We're, we'll drop the Blood Sorceress for mm -hmm. next turn, and uh, he's not gonna realize that we're still within the range of ending him right now. <laughs> right. Well, I, I tell you, I do. If I realize, well, now, I, Dagoth might throw me off, but I know if I see it in Assassin, I'm counting on the fact that every card in their hand is going to hit me in the face. So if I'm if I'm at five health and, and I'm Beast of Steel right now, I'm I'm pretty much counting on a loss, um, just because that's like once you once you figure out that's what it is, cause you just know pretty much every card, all three cards are going to do some damage to your face, regardless of 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 what you think. So you know it's going to be a lightning bolt. Or, now, do you? I didn't. I actually didn't get a chance to really go through the deck list. Do you have? Oh, interesting. Okay. Uh, we can make up for that. He's not removing the blood sorceress. Yeah, yeah, that's... Which is, she's uh, she's five, right? Right off the jump? Yep. Uh, blood sorceress is, uh, yeah, is deals five to the face. Oh, oh there you oh. go. Okay. I mean, that's... We're gonna have to do some math. I think we were... Still within range, maybe? Uh, I think you need nine to... So you're one one off. Because uh, Blood Sacrament... Oh, no! Blood Sacrament... Yeah, yeah. No, no. Blood Sacrament's four. Yeah, one off. Okay. So this guy is uh, stabilizing. <laughs> um, what we're going to do... Let's put that there. Let him hit face. Draw a couple cards. Sounds um, good. but I think, I think I'll do this just to, just to prime the next turn. Nice. So have you noticed uh, as you've been playing this? Are there are there decks that it's particularly strong against, particularly weak against, or is it pretty much the results are the same? Maybe if they have a, a more drain heavy deck, it might pose a bit more of an issue. But other than that, uh, it's it's kind of kind of well, the same matchup wise. You know, there are there are matchups where people just run like absolute meta decks. So it's it's been a little bit of a struggle sometimes to just like stay you know because they sometimes they might have drain sometimes they might have like other stuff to stabilize mm -hmm. so oh please finish you know, it with it's mud just, crab please finish with mud crab <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure let's let's do that yay <laughs> I love that they actually went out of the way to animate that <laughs> this one this one will go a little different Ah, this yes. one is definitely gonna play a little different. I mean, it's a great you got a great combo set up already with the soul split though. That's that's like the ideal. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna put this on this side because you know people love to run invade. Yeah. And considering it's guild sworn, you know, I wouldn't let that. A fine battle. Let that fly. To die. Yeah, you know yep. it. You know if the taunt, like I mean, yeah, I hate to, I hate to say it, but it just, it just becomes ubiquitous. Where it's like, if, if they, you know, seem to be a bit of a bit of a turd muffin, it, it's probably invade. Yep. Yep. All right. Well, I'm gonna put this down. Trying to build up that side of the board. And you were just telling me, uh, like I said, uh, we, we have we have conversations kind of in between the games, or whatever. But uh, just for those who are who may want to try this deck out, or and just for people in general, uh, you were just telling me that actually you were you were surprised that it uh, that game went that well. Um, that that isn't always yeah. your experience. Yeah, it's not always my experience, and I'm definitely gonna get rid of this. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, it's not it's not usually my usual experience. Right now, I actually got to catch up a little bit if I want the the premiums with the for for the monthly card. Oh yeah. Grizzly. Okay. That's weird. I'll use that. Nice. Do this. I love seeing sweet rolls uh, get weaponized. It's very satisfying. Thank you. That's less than satisfying. Ah, no luck. Eight seven six. No luck. No manners. No class. Yeah. Yep. Invade. Invade will do the invading. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's such a it's such a mechanic that. I think they tried really hard to balance. I wasn't a gamer of for this uh, for the early uh, invade when they released it, mm -hmm. but I, I heard there you were able to use like two gates and just like buff up really quick. Yeah, it used to be so um, you could that could, was busted. Yeah, they, they, you could play like the unsummon uh, any kind of unsummon and put it back in your hand and it would retain its level. So you could just ramp it up and then before it could get removed, put it back in your hand and then when you want to play a bunch of cards, you just throw down that gate, uh, two gates, stack them up however you want and you just like in one turn have a lane full of, uh, you know, charge, drain, you know, essentially mini Dagothers without without you know, the opponent being able to do anything about it because you you know, you can't really do anything once the gate's back in their hand because uh, it's, yeah. it's never yeah, going to get... Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, it was... But I'm like, that's ridiculous. That was insane. That should not have been where this archetype started. It's It should have started where it's at now and then gotten adjusted, you know, nerfed a little bit more. Uh, that was insanity. Yeah. I mean, the people who came up with that idea actually watched a video on it. Oh, really? Um, yeah. Um, basically, they just started messing around with unsummon, and uh, and it became a problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean that's the thing. I guess we got to remember, devs are humans too. So you know, we 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 think of concepts, we think of cards. We're like, oh, this would be so cool to do. Devs are the same way, and unless somebody's there to kind of rein them in, they they may run with an idea that is just not. Not great for the game. Yeah. I'm not sure if we can pull through. I mean, we got Tazcad, but Invade. Invade's a little annoying sometimes. Uh, especially when they, they pull uh, RNG like that. Yeah, yep. Hmm. Okay. Appreciate that, I guess. Um, hmm. We'll get rid of that. Yeah, I, yeah, I was going to ask you, like, I mean, and that's that's another thing I can appreciate about this particular build is, uh, like you said, playing mid grow more so than just pure aggro. Like you are, you are having to discern making trades because on a typical assassin, you just you're always throwing face, you know. So there, it was right, like you're, right. you're you're choosing to make the trade because you you are trying to contest. But oh boy. That's getting ugly. Yeah, this looks like a problem. Oh, well, you know, if he starts killing his own creatures and he... Oh, there's Thieves' Den. Okay. Oh, my... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. All right. Let's see. It's a little bit of a... A little bit of a... Crazy turn. So, yeah... I think we take the L on this one, but we are trying to stabilize. Let's see here. So, prepare to die. Oh, for goodness sakes. I'll, I know I'm going to lose, so I'm just going to show off the mechanic. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, um, So, you know, you got afflicted Alit. Nice. It does that. Yeah. Um, we will put see this down. Feet. And this is supposed to pilfer as well. Mm. Um, but yeah, he's going to win. Yeah. I'm just going to let him do his thing. <laughs> We're going up against a non-invade player. So the, that makes my... <laughs> that makes me feel a little more comfy. Yeah. Uh, 
As you can see, we got Dagoth. Um, we actually have the... I don't know these cards by heart mm -hmm. at all. I just I just know what they do. Um, there's this... Uh, the, the 10 cost that summons two Atronox and hits face twice. Oh yeah, uh, Supreme Atromancer. Yeah, Supreme Atromancer. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you, you could uh, see that combo as well with the Thieves' Den. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's a great, that is a great concept. I, I really, I don't know why. I mean, I guess, because like you said, that's more mid grow. Typically burn is like, get it done quick. But I think there's a, an elegance uh, to being able to, uh, like, it, hopefully we get to see like the player stick around long enough. I mean, if this is greed, uh, if this is greed, Evan Hart, we, we may very well see that come into play. Um, we'll see, we'll see, for sure. And I didn't. I I can't remember from the list. Are you run, is are you running all three copies of Thieves Den? Yes. Okay. Yes, I am. Okay. That's that's the the three cards over. Okay. <laughs> and where did that where did that is because so did you have this deck built essentially and then like did did something or saw something and were like oh hey let me let me throw the were they kind of an afterthought to this deck or did you build the the deck around that concept? I, I built the deck around the concept, yeah. Okay. So, um, like, I actually used to play in another, for the most part, in another Discord server. Uh, shout out to Warginator. Um, nice. He's, he's been out of the content creation a little, uh, a hot minute, but he's trying to keep it steady from time to time. But uh, basically, um, I would just like build like I would ask myself if something would work and and just try it out mm -hmm. and try to refine it afterwards. And yeah, that's how we got this cuz originally it was Eldmary Dominion. But oh. um I I thought if I make a Dagoth there's more cards that hit face um and can uh, pilfer much better. Oh, Sorry about geez. that, my G. <laughs> We're coming off a little aggro. Oh yeah. Well, I mean um, that's uh, up against a deck like this. You, you, that's kind of kind of be the default role because this is definitely uh, the. You just gotta hope it doesn't have the archer's gambit and crossbows and all that jazz and hui. Yep. I mean, I should <laughs> Speak of the devil. But yeah. <laughs> it's all good, though. You can tell he's having fun. <laughs> okay. Zendax the Immortal. I'll let you have a little more magic. I don't care. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm risky. I'm risky like that. I, I'll take risks, you know. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it pays off, sometimes it doesn't. But, you know, that, that's just kind of how I go about things. That's what, five damage? Okay. Um. Hmm. Yeah, we'll prime it. <laughs> uh, they didn't change up her um, getting hit by stuff uh, voiceover. I, I, I don't think I've ever seen that card take Deal that many hits in a row. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, uh. All right, that's, he, he, that's... He trying to go crazy. I'm going to just uh, put this. Okay, so you can see how I literally went crazy with the uniques. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, which... Oh my... Oh dear. That's a, that's a harsh one. Alright. Razzmodazzmodazzm. You can never go wrong with Razzm. It almost feels like a staple at this point. It really is, which is great, because he was a late... He was a latecomer. Um, but yeah, I think he's almost more ubiquitous than Tazcat at this point. Like, I mean, obviously Tazcat is in most... Most of the same decks as well, but I think... Uh, I've talked to some folks that Rasm is the first card they crafted, the first legendary they crafted, which is uh, crazy. Little little guy's uh, made a place for himself. 
Yeah, it can be busted. Oh gosh, what? Ah, oh, why is Endax? Why? The poop stone. Yep, <laughs> exactly right. Uh, I'm surprised I didn't give uh, Night Town Lord charge, but at this point, I don't know that it's that's twenty. Redier would come in so handy right now. Oh, that would be beautiful. Oh, well, it would have been nice. Ooh, he just he okay. ramps so so quick. But let's see, can you? Uh. Hmm. hmm. Yeah, he's going to finish me off next turn if I don't do something about this. Uh, well, it is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. Very true. Yeah, that, that Iron Atronach. I mean, that's, that's the thing that always gets me, you know, in games like this where I'm like, okay, I get it. You know, the ramp is part of the game and everything, but you have 75 cards. I guarantee you a good chunk of them are not high end you know, greedy oh, yeah. stuff, but yet yeah, that's, you know, what you see, I mean, two Night Lord, Night Town Lord, uh, Atronach. Oh, is that gonna, oh, oh, oh. By the power of the hiss. And Atronach will close it out. Oof. Wow. That got out of hand yeah. quickly. <laughs> When I first started, I mean, I was just scrapping to get a viable deck together at the very beginning. And, you know, I'm seeing I'm seeing some premiums start to come down and I'm like, I will never do that. You know, it's not a big deal. I will say there are some like I, I think the first time was when I realized that there was a um, a title you could get, you know, the resplendent by having an all premium deck. And I started with horse armor, uh, you know, which was which, which a freebie. That's a premium. And then there was a bunch of, you know, other stuff that I started getting just in random packs. And so I sprang for a few commons in in premium just so that I could get that title and be like, oh, I'm resplendent. But, um, you know, I mean, some of them, some of them look really cool, but again, it's all, it's all visual. It's, it's not, I love the fact that it's, they're, they're ridiculously overpriced, but I like the fact that, uh, it gives something for you to spend your money on. If like, there are people like Inu, he's got 99, you know, 999,000 gems. He's got to have something to spend them on, but you don't need them right. in order to win. Your, your premiums don't give you an advantage in the game at all. I, I, and I'm glad they kept it like that. Okay, so this guy is uh, maybe going for something along the lines of aggro Dagoth. Yeah. And uh, I will um, do this. Close ranks. Let nothing through. That's where cards like House Kinsman are so great because it's it's that it, it heals you and does the damage. So you're you're um, if you, if you have to race, that makes it a little bit easier. Yeah, of course. Um, put this down. So Fiery Imp is also good with the Thieves Den. Oh yeah. There's a lot of this these type of cards where they just hit face for the Thieves Den to pop off. And what we're gonna do, let's see if you can catch up with your little cursing. I was gonna say, yeah, that the poor imps are gonna take a bit of a beating, but they knew what they were getting into when they signed up. Yep. <laughs> you know, I actually, um, I've looked at this, uh, at the imps before, and I'm, I'm like, why aren't they considered, you know, like, Daedric creatures. Hmm, that's a good question. Um, yeah, that they might... literally look like demons. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's because uh, I don't think the 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 little the imp. What, what is it? The um, it's the little. It's a three three that makes all cards cost a minimum of three. Um, something scamp, I think, bedeviling scamp or whatever. Yeah, yeah I don't think yeah. he's Daedric either. So I guess there's a... No, he, he is. Oh, he is, is he? He is Daedra. Okay. Yeah. May have to, may, may have to check the... I know, I know the... I, I think uh, Bedeviling Scamp I came later. I'm wondering if... Me. Well, no, because... Uh, what's his face? Reeve is Daedra, and he was in the first set as well. So I don't... I was thinking maybe they didn't think about Daedra as a class back then, but you know, like I said, Reeve is Daedra. 
time. He was he's core set. So yeah, I'm not sure. That's an interesting question. Maybe any of you lore masters out there who know Skyrim, maybe you can explain the difference. Maybe there's some kind of non -oblivion. Yeah, there's there's definitely like that situation going on with like there there are a lot of creatures that didn't pop up in Skyrim and that's mostly what I played in the past so mm. didn't really get the chance to to play Oblivion mm -hmm. I know a lot of people like to go back and experience that but you know I'm a I'm a guy who likes um, Skyrim better yeah yeah I, I love the restoration loops restoration loops oh yeah that's uh the exploit where you would like make a potion to make your smithing better and then you would make uh an armor piece to enchant it well it's just basically taking these potions and like getting better and better and better potions oh. by drinking them and and you would drink the potion that would make the other potion better with the alchemy gear oh, okay and that way if you drank that potion if you made a potion with that like crazy loop mm -hmm. it would be like a busted potion oh okay. and and it would just basically be you know kind of like um Hold on one second. Yep, yep. Put I this guy not. here. Um, but yeah, basically it would just make everything busted because you could make potions around smithing. You could make potions around uh, enchanting, and and just uh, apply those effects with the crazy potion. Apply those effects to the crafting like and the okay. enchanting. Gotcha, gotcha. Oh, I think uh, the the button. Were you? Oh yeah, <laughs> a, a gentle uh, nud, nudging from Doka there. Hey, um, oh that sounds awesome. I don't think I've ever. I mean, granted, I I'm uh, like you intrigued me the other day. You were talking about you know the, the, the idea of me, uh, you know, of playing some Skyrim. There, I just realized there's so much I like because I've played it. I probably put you know. 60 or 70 hours in which is a drop in the bucket but for all that time like i haven't beat the game and there's so much stuff that i hear people do with it that i've never done and so i think uh yeah that's that's kind of a an encouraging thought that there's a lot more to do in the game than i know oh, about yeah. and i wish i could play oblivion i wish i could play some of the you know elsewhere or what you know some of the early ones because i know people love those but i, I would need a remaster I'm just I'm just a little too visually oriented and not having seen them before I have no same. nostalgia goggles. I just I can't get there. Same, same. Yeah. <laughs> um that's that's kind of my situation with Oblivion, but um they actually remade uh Morrowind as a mod for Skyrim, so Really? Oh, come on. Yeah. Ah, this poop stone. Uh no kid so you can so it's just like so it's like a single mod that you can apply in it. It essentially plays the game through the graphics of Skyrim. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Ooh. And it has like story. It's literally like a populated continent, basically. Mm -hmm. I might have to. It's look just it. literally like Skyrim, but it's you know remade Morrowind. So yeah. Wow. It's pretty fun. Fun stuff. He's got an item. Yep. Hmm. He's got two. Wow. Wow. Well, you know, we take the L's, but I never give up on my concepts. <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of how I got the legend. So. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. That's and that's that's something I think you know for me to take to heart and other folks as well that you know the, the folks that get there. Some of them, you know, especially if they're playing, I guess the quote unquote sweaty decks or the or the meta decks, they, you know, they, they can maybe get there quickly. But for a lot of folks, oh, and you got there quick too. I mean, you 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 said you were there earlier and stopped playing for a little while uh, this season. Um, but that you know, it's just it's just it's perseverance. And I mean, I think fundamentally the deck has to work on some level. You know, with a, you know above a fifty percent. But aside from that, it's really just persevering and and just understanding that there's going to be ebbs and flows. Yep, yep, for sure. I mean, there's not a deck that can do it all. 
Mm. There's always uh, this game is like at, like a more complex uh, rock paper scissors. Hmm. In in that sense, where there's counters to everything, there's ways to to do so much stuff with these cards, you know. Yeah. Like you can combo off in so many different ways. But yeah. Um, I think that'll that'll do it. Honestly. Okay. Yep. No, that's that's great, man. We got, like I said, got to see uh, the deck, got to introduce it, and um, like I said, I might. Uh, all right, see you one time. Yeah, I'll probably. Didn't, I'll... Really, didn't really get the pilfer off, but you know, it is what it is. Yeah, they they you know they got to see the concept of it, and it did go off once. It was just you know right before right before invade did its thing, uh, but at least they, they yeah. know what to do, and, and maybe there's some gonna be some folks that'll take that. And uh, I mean that's what people say like they're like they get so inspired by watching de seeing decks like these because they'll take that, and there may be a specific card in their mind that pops off when they see that, and they're gonna try to to you know add to it or to do something and and take your core concept your idea creativity and then you know kind of take it in their own way and and that'll give them you know some some more play time because uh, you know it can be if, yeah. if you're just in a vacuum by yourself you, the creativity or the enthusiasm can start to ebb because you can't really get out of your own mind so it's it's great i, I like i like this yeah yeah for sure um there's probably somebody else will probably look at the deck and be like okay that's a good idea but it'd be better if you do this and mm. they start adjusting it in their own way for sure well and that would be that would be like the greatest honor slash like gr you know teeth grind is if like you find out you're playing like you end up playing an opponent who you realize is essentially playing your deck but they've done it a different way or whatever and it's like and they're and it's and it's kicking butt and you're like oh, for crying out loud i'm the reason you have that deck and you're Smacking me in the face with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I actually had a. Maybe if I can get footage, I'll probably show you in the future. But um, I had the uh, what's gonna call it? The relentless raider mm -hmm. combo off really well with the pilfer. Oh. Yeah, yeah, and she's in that that build, right? Yeah. Correct. I didn't even think she about drew that. her, but um, yeah, uh, when you break the rune, she just starts going. I wonder, I, I, like, obviously, I know there's a lot of reach in intelligence, but I wonder uh, if, because a lot of the stuff you're talking about, like the the scamps and the or the imps and the relentless raider, a uh, lit, like they all seem to be, mo uh, you know, a lot of them are in strength. I wonder if if a you could do the same concept with like just a, as an archer, so that you have a little bit more chance of drawing the. Um, the, the yeah i could maybe house. if we can uh minimize the the amount of greed that i like to give <laughs> to <my decks. laughs> we could probably make it more consistent for sure but no, I, I I get the appeal. I mean, I, I love I love like especially Dagoth's high end, like just a lot of a lot of charge and a lot of uh, just fun fun creatures to play. But yeah, just thinking about being able to set just set off that that uh, that pilfer chance um you know a little more often because like you said i mean i never thought relentless raider with pilfer but i that's freaking amazing and can you imagine like you get one you get two rune breaks and she's like uh what i don't know three three she four four one for pilfer yeah yeah so <laughs> that's really she cool. would be she would be uh a four three i think yeah yeah she's two so she get two rune breaks she'll, she'll be a four three yeah and then you've got, if you, I mean, you, this would be going in a, diff, a much different direction, but you could even have your, uh, your, um, you know, the archer, the, 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 the cards that come down that shoot, you, where they can, sh you know, ping face or uh, ping whatever, yeah. you know, the three yeah. one come down and he comes, he ends up being a four two right off the jump. Yeah, and there's actually a couple more uh, wood elves that do, do sort of the same thing. Mm -hmm. The the scout. You know, sharpshooter scout. Yeah, that's what I was thinking of. That's 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 that was her. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, the, the options are or the potential is, I wouldn't say limitless, but there's there's a lot of different ways to go with it. Um, but yeah, heck yeah, heck yeah. Well, uh, uh, thank you again so much. Uh, I know I know this is an early morning for you, so I appreciate you you coming out early and uh, and you know giving us. Giving us some inspiration and, and thoughts on how to how to 
branch out even more with the what pilfer mechanic yet? and uh, not just not just a typical run of the mill burn build. Uh, My Attack! Out of my sight! Mamora tests us. Come and warm yourself. Time to fight. Follow, sir. about this. This is a worthy contest. This episode is sponsored in part by the Legendary Remnant Discord. If you are still playing Elder Scrolls Legends and you want to connect with the community, come on down to the Discord. We'd love to have you. Talk, play games, have fun. Uh, I sound like I'm doing a Chuck E. Cheese ad. Whatever. <laughs> Check it out. But the primary sponsor of this video is Shrewd Savior, a creation from the keen mind of Yubyum36. It is a three-cost high elf in willpower. Two, three, Prophecy, Guard, and Plot. Plot, you gain three health. I like this card. It is the first of its kind, as far as I know, where the Prophecy is obviously... The Prophecy and Plot are going to be different. So, uh, obviously, uh, Plot only can happen on your turn. So, you have to... Plot comes from playing a card uh, and then playing a card after that. So, if you want to trigger the Plot, you have to play a card first, and then you play your, your card, and it will give you that Plot uh, trigger. Obviously, if it comes down as a Prophecy, you can't get Plot. So, Prophecy comes down, you don't get the three health... But you did get a 2-3. And there's another, uh, I can't remember, he's, he's a guard. Uh, 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 nobody breaks the law on my watch. You know, that guy is, is in willpower 2-3, uh, uh, which is also a prophecy. So, But I think that's a 2-cost, if I'm not mistaken. I have to double-check, but I, I believe that's a 2-cost. This doesn't cost a little bit more, but it is. it doesn't It doesn't give you any more. It, it gives you the same stats on the board as a prophecy, but if you end up getting it, uh, if you have it in your hand, you get to play it as a plot, and you get that 3 health, which I like because a lot of prophecy cards... Like, they're, they're, you play them as prophecies. You want to see them as prophecies. Like, Dark Harvester is one a big one. You never want to have to play that one raw if you can help it. That's not what you want to see. You play it because you want it to come off as a prophecy. But as you know, you got five chances in a typical game at a prophecy. And the odds, you know, what, what are the odds? Even if you run three three of a kind in there, the chances of getting that particular one as a prophecy, not all that high. So this one, you would, you can include it for the, the, the prophecy effect to get that 2-3 guard. But ideally, or more than likely, you're also going to want to benefit off the plot mechanic. So you either get it as a free card, as a prophecy, or you have it in your hand. But it's not a stinker in your hand. It's not like, uh, what is it, Dis Disappointment Dragon. The 4-4 four, four dragon in intelligence uh, prophecy. It doesn't feel good to play out of hand. I mean, it's not, it's not horrible. I, I, you know, people call it disappointment. I call it disappointment. But in fact, it's not the worst. Four cost for 4-4 four, four stats. That's not, that's not horrible. But you want that to come down as a prophecy. If it doesn't, then you're kind of bummed out because it's 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 not going to be an amazing an amazing play to, to have. This one is great because you, you get the two three on the board. But if it ends up in your hand, you're not bummed out. I mean, depending. Uh, this is probably not obviously as a guard, not going to be in an aggro build. Probably not a token build. You're, it would be certainly more of a uh, you know uh, a defensive card. Duh, it's a guard. Uh, but I, I like it, and I think I think it's the first time I've seen a card that has is has a prophecy effect, but is also has a separate effect that can't be activated by a prophecy. Obviously, you've got your five cost, three, three, 
uh, warden, I think, or whatever. He comes down and he gives you three health. So, and that, which is prophecy, but if you have it in hand, then you just get a three-three guard. Whereas here, there's a benefit, and it cost, and the cost is low enough that it uh, will allow you to. It'll make trigger, triggering it as a plot a little bit easier. The great thing about plot, even over the mechanics, I'm not, I don't love it as much as some of the other mechanics, but the, the, what makes it a little bit better, I think, in some ways, is that you can choose whether or not you engage, you, you activate the plot or not. Usually, you're all, almost always going to want to, but if you are wanting your opponent to give you a rune break, you can play this one first, not get that extra three health, and then continue playing on your hand. I mean, it's, it's not that big of a deal. I think it was it sounded like a bigger deal when I first thought of it. Now that I'm talking about it, it's not really not a big deal. But Shrewd Savior, great card. First time, like I said, seeing that effect. I would say that because it's got a little razzle dazzle, might might want to see it as a rare. Uh, it's, it's, I think it's got a little a little more going for it than a, than a, than a little a lowly common. But you know, yum yum uh, does tend to kind of you know uh, downplay the card a little bit. I think. Um, yeah, I mean, not not as a, it's, and that's not a, that's not a criticism. That's just some people would be like, oh, this is totally a legendary, and you see the effect, you're like, well, it's not really a legendary. It's not bad, but I mean, it could be an epic maybe or a, even a, a rare. Uh, but I, I do I do I do think this one would deserve a rare title, uh, but, or a rare, you know, a rare distinction, but yeah, fun card, and, uh, and again, I, I like the fact, uh, that I think this is like the third one, uh, from Yum Yum that is kind of building onto some of the earlier mechanics that we saw that we probably would have liked to see more of in future expansions, uh, like the, the Expertise, my favorite, now we got Plot, so I, I, I like that idea of, like, focus, making a point to make those mechanics more robust and uh, possibly more effective and more often utilized. So thank you very much for taking a gander, and now, back to the game. So there you go, you got to see a little bit of me playing the deck. Uh, unfortunately, I'm gonna, I'll put up a screenshot here so that you can see, we, I actually had the prime setup that Abria was talking about, but, well, you can see what happened here. It's not pretty. Yeah, that hurt. That hurt. That was unfortunate. But, you know, you got to see a little bit of it. I wanted to finish out that conversation as well, though, and, and do it while the deck that you had seen was the continuing to play. But, uh, Va, Va, oh, gosh. I haven't tried to pronounce it. Will be done. Ve, where? Ve, Va, where? Ve, where? Ve, where? Perhaps? Va, where? I think that's it. The Forgotten Hero, I actually, you might have uh, noticed, uh, was somebody that, uh, our opponent in one of those games, and uh, just friended me afterward, um, reached out, and uh, actually has, has watched before, and so now we're getting to see uh, him on the upside against Cove, the mage's archmage. Unfortunately, again, I was talking a little too much, but uh, he is running, anytime you see that, the Chieftain's Banner, you know it is a, it's not necessarily your most aggressive orc deck. I mean, he is running a lot of orcs, but farm, defender, Again, not necessarily uh, hyper aggressive. Oh, oh, oh! So this may this game may have a little more legs than we might have thought, and by we I mean me. So the way are putting as much damage as, as as he can on. I'm not sure if he runs silence. Obviously, uh, that's going to be a big deal. Otherwise, he's just got to try to kill Vivek with strength of. Strength of arms. Oh no! Oh my gosh. Honestly, so between this and, and I guess our game, uh, looks like this is just, it's, gonna, it's, a, it's a bit of a rough day on the ladder. Uh, or, or it's starting out as such, for sure. Uh, I mean, you can play both Militant Chieftain and Morka Gatekeeper. Uh, yeah, he just, I think he just really is going to have to stack damage in that shadow lane as best as possible and hope Cove cannot get out an Ebon Heart Oracle or some other major drain creature before he can finish off with that. Awesome. Thank you so much, uh, The Wayer. Let, let me know if I pronounce that correctly or not. But happy, happy our path is crossed. I'll admit I was I was a little bit nervous because sometimes when you get a friend request after after a win, um, you know you never know what you're going to get. But like I said, the majority of the Tesla community is great, so I wasn't sure. But I, you know I would rather take the chance and you know come across somebody who's like, oh, what a blah 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 you are, and I totally could have taken you. Why don't you you know any number of nasty things? I'd rather do that and then just you know block the person then not accept the friend request and miss out on a chance to connect with somebody. So uh, thank you again, Vi uh, the way you made my day. It's always, always great to have, you know, to meet somebody else who's playing. Oh, and uh, to my point earlier, unfortunately, 
I mean, luckily, Valer did enough damage, I think. Yeah, he's got well the game. Fought. Good game, good game. Uh, Cove almost was able to turn the corner, but... Finish them off. Oof, that was a close one. And we join guitarist on bass, the Centurion, up against Chamer... Ch 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 Chomer? Chomer 11 Honor? I'm guessing Honor is a another guild that I haven't really had much acquaintance with. He is running my favorite Watch card back, or at least now. recently my favorite card back. Still a little bit bummed that I did not push through I'll my my sour I'll mood to at least give a, a good attempt at getting the premium version. It's not quite a big of a deal, particularly because uh, let's see. All right, so Guitarist has switched up a little bit. Uh, he was trying to put together a nice mid mid range uh, warrior deck. That's what we saw. Oh, maybe he didn't. I don't know. I'm a little confused right now because some of the games I'm coming in late, and so I'm only getting a piece of it. But I'm still talking about it, so I'm not entirely sure which what's going to be featured here. But Guitarist was running, uh, tried a, a warrior deck, and it just didn't. Oh no, you didn't see that because he got rushed down. Essentially, he was up against a token crusader, I think, and and just wasn't able to to hold the board, but he's still, he's still got to do some work on it, but he's uh, switched over to Crusader. Do I have a favorite deck? Um, That's a good question. Um, and I, I, I will answer... Uh, uh, I will answer him directly, but he was asking... Uh, v Vawayer, I believe that's how you say it, I was asking if I have a favorite deck, and I figured I'll answer him directly, but I thought I'd also put it out there. Um, I don't... Well, of course, my answer is not amazing, because it's... I, no, I, I don't think I do. I, I do... I kind of have a little bit of a fondness for Battle Mage, because it was what I started with. And I made the mistake... I think I've told this story before. When I first started, I was like, you know, vampires and werewolves and stuff, that's not my jam. That's, you know, that's the horror genre. Horror genre. Uh, you know, it's not, it's, not, it's not what I want, so I kind of abandoned... I, I, I dusted every single... Um, Willpower. I'm not, I'm not the vampires aren't there, but I was like, you know, I kind of like the chink chink of the of the swords clanking and everything when they get upgraded. But I was like, I don't think I like the empire much either. So I dusted all my essentially spell sword was the combo. Um, I think I liked agility enough that I kept a lot of those around. But I pretty much said, in order to get an awesome battle mage deck, I am going to dust all my other attributes. And so I, a lot of the neutrals got dusted. And so I ended up well, and. Of course, for anybody who's done that and made that mistake, you know, dusting commons and, and rares and everything is not going to get you a whole heck of a lot. So I pretty much got rid of a huge chunk of my deck and did, wasn't really able to supplement it very well with a, an amazing Battle Mage deck. And, and I didn't really know what I was doing at the time anyway. As I've said many times before, my mid-grow slash aggro Battle Mage deck had a freaking Ice Storm in it. So that just tells you how much I didn't know what I was doing. Guitarist on base. Good prophecy there, unfortunately. Uh, he has done an. Uh, he can take two damage off the board. Well, no, he may be able to take more. Was taken from me. Uh, and all those wards, though, that's going to hurt. That, that field lane alone is a problem. So he can do. He can burn and pillage that lane. Yep. But. Yeah, he is. Unfortunately, he's going to fall to the unrelenting force of the this assassin build. I didn't know he had that, of course, but I just assumed he had some way to get around it and to do those last few points of damage. Good game, guitarist. Alrighty, we're going to finish this game off with Aeros NPO, who just happens to be. Playing against No Luck 876 from earlier, uh, who we know, of course, is running Invade. Even if we didn't see the card on the board that indicates as such, we know from earlier when um, uh, Amaria went up against him. So hopefully we will get to see some revenge in the form of... Aeros will be the, the, the hand of vengeance uh, to... Um, to... to... Well, I mean, it doesn't help Amarillo, of course. And Amarillo wasn't shaking about it. That was one thing I really appreciated, even just watching uh, as he, we, he played. 
you know, he, he just kind of was like, okay, you know, just move on. It is what it is. You know, I'm going to play the, the deck the way I want to play it. I'm going to build the decks I want to play. And I'm going to persevere and uh, we'll see how things work. So, yeah, no luck uh, given given Aros the same kind of yes, lippy treatment that he gave uh, gave our other friend there. And, uh, yeah, just got to hope, hope Aros can pull it off. This doesn't look like his uh, Nyx Ox assassin. More of a, of a medium build, and he's making the trades he needs to. I cannot believe I like I I, I dusted a giant snake, I, a premium giant snake. It's such a cool looking card, but it's not so I, I don't play it enough food. to craft one. But I, I got one out of a pack. But I was like I could dust this and get like there was a time where I was like I'll never use premiums, you know. And Amarillo and I talked about that a little bit. Uh, but I have I have started to grow a little bit of an affection for them just because I think some of them look really cool. Even I said I would never ever do a premium a premium action item or a premium action or item because they you never really get to see them like they're in your hand you're not really looking at them but when, as soon as you play them they're done and you don't victory you don't get to see it so yeah uh, no luck trying to get into a Ross's head and he is definitely barking up the wrong tree there uh, but trying to circle back around I, I man. I'm all over the place this morning. I'm still trying to figure out the deck delve My is going to be a thing. Um, it, it has been alluded to the, the desire to see deck building more of that in uh, you know in these videos. I'm more than happy to do it. I don't know. I think it really is just going to depend. Like in this one, the deck delve uh, because we you know we got to see a few games, but it wasn't you know I typically you know want the videos to be about an hour or so. I mean they could be shorter. I've got a few 45 minute ones out there, and maybe maybe I should just stick with that. But I think, um, I think, you know, just to play it by ear. Um, yeah, sorry, brain's all awash. Uh, but yeah, trust me, there, there will be more in the future. So if you've got a deck you're building, right now, we should, like I said, I should have it set up so that I can do uh, much better with, like, the Discord with the audio and stuff. Somebody mentioned that the music was a little bit loud on... Another video that I did, nicely, done. and it's just hard because right Crazy. now Discord volume. My victory is assured. Okay, uh, our the 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 Discord, which is where you're hearing my my guests and everything come from. That because of how I got it set up, it's a janky setup. That is tied to the game audio, and while I can fudge the levels a little bit, it's very difficult uh, to to correct an imbalance in the audio. All right, so Aeros has shifted into full full attack mode. It's always a risky thing. You know, you don't really want to give invade too many cards. And you can see no luck. We saw the strategy before. I'll take a bunch of damage, and I think that's just going to be the end of it. Nice, Aeros with a quick and definitive win over no luck 876. Thank you, Aeros. And that's going to do it for today's episode. Uh, thank you again uh, to special thanks to Amarillo for the very first deck delve. As I was going to say, if anybody else wants to, uh, wants to, has a deck that they want to do, this is something that is relatively simple to do. If you don't want to necessarily go as deep as like a, a spotlight and you just kind of want to show the deck and uh, get some playtime on it and talk about it more than happy to to do that just reach out let me know uh, happy to have made a new friend uh today as well as mixing it up in the ladder i mean that's how i met jay shades in fact um we we played against each other ran into each other twice i think and i'm sure that's in the earlier video oh no the episode where we actually met um i lost the footage or something happened and i had to do like a, a recap and so you didn't actually get to see the full games between jay shades and i but that's how we you know met and then it kind of went on from there. So, uh, and I've, I've met other folks that way as well, but it's always nice. It's always nice to have a game with somebody and have a chance to kind of connect and uh, and grow grow the community even more and uh, make a new friend. So very excited about that. Thank you all so much for watching and until next time, keep playing.